According to a Pew Research Center survey, 9 out of 10 Americans want the country to use more solar power and about half of U.S. homeowners say they have given serious thought to adding solar panels to their homes. However, only around 8% of households already have solar systems installed. Why so few? Well, surely some start planning a system, but they give up halfway because figuring out how many solar panels you need can be difficult for a newcomer. That's why we made this video. I'm Brian, and today I'll explain in detail how to resize a solar system for your home. It all starts with evaluating your daily energy consumption. Usually, you can take a look at your energy bill and find the number of total kilowatt hours set per month. Divide it by 30 and you'll get the mean value for a day. It's best to take a few different bills and compare the figures because consumption varies depending on the season. You may need heating in winter and AC cooling in summer. If your bill doesn't have this information, you can ask the utility to send you some data. On average, a medium-sized American house requires around 30 kilowatt hours daily. If you have no bills to rely on, you can install an electric meter or go with a rough estimate. Make a table with all the appliances that you have and write down their power ratings and the number of hours that you use them per day. Multiply the power of each appliance by hours of use per day and you'll get a very approximate number for your energy consumption. And I say it's approximate because the power needs of some compliances, like a fridge or an AC, change throughout the day. Plus, 6% of your energy bill are phantom loads, devices that are plugged in but are in standby mode. One way or another, you'll figure out your daily energy consumption. This is the amount of energy you need to generate with your solar system during daytime. To figure its size, we have to talk a little about peak sun hours, or PSH. Some people mistake peak sun hours for hours of daylight. In fact, the PSH is only the time when solar panels receive maximum irradiance and perform at their full capacity, basically as close as it gets to lab conditions. The number of PSH ranges from 3.5 to 6.5 across the United States and changes with the season. For example, California has an average of 6 PSH throughout the year. You can check the number of PSH in your state on our page of state solar power rankings. I'll add the link in the description. To figure out the size of the future solar system, we'll take our energy consumption and divide it by the number of peak sun hours. Let's say I live in Kansas alone in a small house with an average number of PSH at 5 and my energy needs are quite low and reach only 20 kilowatt hours per day. 20 kilowatt hours divided by five hours is four kilowatts. If I'm planning a grid tie system, I should also account for energy losses because the wires, inverter, and grid connection aren't 100% efficient. I can ask my utility provider about the potential losses or I can just add 15% capacity on top. Four multiplied by 1.15, is 4.6 kilowatts. On paper, this would be the system that fully covers my needs when the sun shines. At night, I would purchase electricity from the grid at lower rates. There are also cloudy days. The panels perform differently when it's gloomy. Some panels are only at 20% of their standard output, and some retain up to 90%, especially if these are Canadian solar or Q-cells panels. The majority of the solar systems in the US are grid tied, but if I'm planning an off-grid installation, I have to increase the size of my array by at least 20% to account for cloudy days and batteries. Also, you have to keep in mind that panels produce 50% more sunlight in July than they do in January. Once you've figured out the size of your system, you have to pick the panels. We've covered this subject of choosing solar panels for a home in one of our previous videos. The average size of a system in the US is six kilowatts. A few years ago, people used 300 watt panels a lot, and you can build a six kilowatt system with 20 300 watt panels. It would take up around 360 square feet. Nowadays, people are more inclined towards larger panels. It's only natural. You save space and you buy fewer modules, even though bigger panels are harder to fit on the roof. A six kilowatt system made out of 15 400 watt panels is going to take only around 300 square feet. Panels rarely break 
but it makes sense to pick a couple of spare ones just in case. My advice is to use the A1 Solar Store calculator, which is going to calculate the size of a system for you, upfront cost, the area that you need it for, expected savings, everything. Check it out. I'll leave a link in the description below. You can also find a link to a free guide that will help you save money on your system and increase profits from it. A solar system is more than just panels though. You also have to purchase an inverter. It converts the direct current panels into alternating current and makes it usable for your appliances. It also interacts with the grid, keeps track of production, and maximizes the output of your system by tweaking the voltage and current. The size of a solar inverter is usually measured in watts. When purchasing an inverter, you have to make sure it suits the size of your solar panel system. If your solar panel array has a combined power of five kilowatts, then a 5,000 watt inverter should be just right for it. Sometimes people add batteries to a solar system. You can use it during power outages or at peak rate times to lower your bill. We've already covered the subject of batteries for a solar system in one of our previous videos. In short, lithium ion batteries are the best choice for a home. The battery has to have a power rating high enough to run all your essential appliances simultaneously, and its capacity has to be big enough for you to survive the power outage. If you're choosing batteries for an off-grid system, the storage should be able to power your house for an entire day or even two. When you add a battery to a solar system, always get a charge controller. It's relatively inexpensive and it prolongs the lifespan of your energy storage because it lowers the voltage coming from your solar array down to a safe level for the battery. The controller has to be compatible with the voltage of your battery. It also has a maximum input voltage, which is usually given as a window, say from 18 volts to 150 volts for a 12 volt battery. Finally, it has an output current. You can figure out the minimum size by dividing your array's power rating by the voltage of the battery and adding 25% on top. For example, a 24 volt battery for a four kilowatt solar system would need a controller of a size of at least 200 amps. That's basically it. That's how you size a solar system for your home and all the parts for it. Leave your comments below and let me know if I missed something. Find a link to our calculator and our free guide with tips on saving money with solar energy in the description. Also, go and check out our magazine and socials. We have a lot of great tips for newcomers to solar energy. I'm Brian, and I'll see you next time.